Well, joining us now is Rabbi Amichai Cohen, who attended the festivities at Mount Meron over the weekend and was an eyewitness to the horrific tragedy that took place. So, you know, for many of our viewers watching from abroad, it really is hard to understand what actually happened. You were there. Tell us when it became clear that there was something wrong. Well, uh, at a certain point, um, there were so many paramedics that just came through. And on a, on a regular year in any large event, it's sort of a normal thing that a person or two pass out and, you know, and they get taken away um, in, in all large events. But at this point, medics just kept, kept on pouring in and they were telling everyone to get out of the way. And uh, they were looking to make a space in the middle of the large gathering so that they could start to take away and ward away uh, those that were injured down to the bottom of the of the of the mountain. What triggered the pushing? What triggered this exact tragedy? Well, th after the uh, the lighting, there was a uh, so the way it works in Mount Meron for hundreds and hundreds of years is that there are that the celebration is, uh, is, is, is celebrated through, through various lightings. And mm -hmm. the lighting is the light of Rabbi Shimon, the light of the inner aspect of Torah. And so that's where people gather uh, to, to witness that and to be a part of it, to get that inspiration for the entire year. And uh, when one of these particular uh, lightings, it was for the Toldot Aaron uh, Hasidic uh, sect, uh, were, were finished, uh, so people started to walk down uh, to exit out. And uh, unfortunately, um, the it, it was not clear where people should be exiting. Mm -hmm. uh, the s signs were not clear enough and whatnot. And uh, as people were walking down at a certain point, there happened to be stairs, which, of course, that didn't make sense at all. Um, one person and a couple of people started to fall down. And then from there, there on, you know, the, the stream of people uh, unfortunately, was unstoppable, right. and that's where everything really went. I can imagine it, that yeah. many people around you were trying to prevent this tragedy as it was taking place. What was the initial reaction from the people around you, and what did you do? Did you fear for your own life? So, well, actually, I was not there. There was some premonition inside of me telling, uh, saying that, you know, I'm I'm good. I'm I'm okay where I am. There's no reason for me to go anywhere else. Um, I go to uh, Meron on a weekly basis, and the area over there, especially on Lag Baomer, is almost like swimming in dangerous waters. And unless you really know where you're going and how to tread, um, it's better to stay in, in a safe area. And that's, that's the feeling that I got. So in the place that I was at, um, that's when I witnessed um, all these people just trying to get through and the paramedics getting in and people were warded out. You know, Lagba Omer, like you mentioned, is usually a massive, massive celebration. How is this tragedy going tragedy, sorry, going to impact, you know, its meeting down the line? Will you go back next year? Will I go back next year? That's that's a good question. Um, I had some thoughts about that because I actually live across the street from or across the mountain from Aaron, rather, and um, and I, you know, I'm not sure necessarily if 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 I wouldn't, I, and I think a lot of people may not, um, and uh, I, right. I think ultimately um, what this let what this has taught me personally, and I think has taught others, is that All right. you know, it's it's about I'm gonna it's have about connecting. It's about connecting to the light of Rabbi Shimon. It's about All right, well, I'm going to have to, to cut you off because we're out for a short break, but thank you for sharing your story with us.